tutorial, we're dyeing cotton, linen, and wool with logwood. Two years ago, we dyed with logwood chips and produced a rich purple color. I saved the dye, so this will be the second extract. We'll use two dye baths, one for the fabric mordanted with alum, and the other with ferrous sulfate or iron. Iron darkens or saddens color. For this project, you need basic dye equipment and a well-ventilated workspace. You need a soaking pot, a dye pot, a heat source, and a candy thermometer to help keep the dye bath at a consistent temperature. You also need, note for safety, wear rubber gloves and a face mask. Logwood comes with strong warnings that it can cause serious skin, eye, or respiratory irritation, and soda ash is caustic. For each batch, we are dyeing both cellulose and protein fabric. The fabric has been scoured and mordanted with a gallnut mordant. The fabric has also been soaking in a mordant brightener to influence the color. The weight of fabric is used to calculate the proportions. One batch soaked in alum and soda ash. The other batch soaked in iron and soda ash. Let's get started. We'll use the basic dye process. Pour the logwood dye into the dye pan. I'm using half of extract two for each batch. Agitate the jar to mix any sediments that have settled to the bottom of the jar. Note that after two years, the dye appears brownish. I wonder if any purple pigment remains. Add enough water to cover the fabric. Logwood dyes best in hard water, so I'm also adding a single anti-acid tablet to each batch. Bring the dye bath to a simmer. Add the pre-soaked prepared fabric to the dye bath without rinsing. Stir to loosen the fabric. Add water to cover. Simmer the fabric for an hour, keeping the temperature between 170 and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Continue to stir periodically for even dyeing turning the fabric frequently while simmering. Turn off the heat and let the pan cool, leaving the fabric in the dye bath. I transferred the project to a bucket and started the second batch. To capture as much color as possible, I soaked both batches overnight. Squeeze out excess dye from the fabric. Rinse the fabric in cool water until the water runs clear. Run the fabric through the washing machine's rinse and spin cycles without soap. I ran them separately to keep track of the two batches. Let the fabric air dry. In a couple of weeks, run the fabric through the washing machine using Synthropol or professional textile detergent and rinse. Air dry again. For the alum mordant batch, the color is a pale lavender. For the iron mordant batch, the color is a darker lavender. The color also differs slightly between fabric types. Unfortunately, the color distinction does not photograph well, but it is detectable in certain light. In closing, logwood is not considered light fast, so it does fade over time. Compare this extract one dish towel, dyed two years ago, with its current color. This towel has been stored in a drawer away from the light, but the color has faded. Still, it is much darker than the extract two dish towels, whether mordanted with alum or iron. Iron can be used to mitigate fading, so it will be interesting to compare the alum and iron-based colors over time. Keep in mind that our dye is two years old, so time may have influenced our outcome. I'm pleased with subtle color results from extract two, and it's fascinating to see the range of colors produced across fiber types even when the basic variables are the same. Still, I've decided not to save the dye bath for a third extract. As always, it's exciting to experiment.